illustrious governor made the incredible announcement that she would not be seeking re-election. Uh, <laughs> I'm right there. Uh, the chaos began in Raleigh, uh, especially among the Democrat Party, and we have seen, you know, a mass exodus of Democrats across the state, including uh, former Speaker of the House Hackney, who has now said he would not run. Linda Guru in the Senate announced today she would not run. Uh, if you want to test the environment right now, watch the Democrats that are jumping out of the waters uh, that are coming through. And so uh, it's kind of exciting news uh, for us. We also got, uh, for those who are getting ready to file, we got some exciting news on redistricting. Three judge panel first tossed out the uh, Democrat, it's basically the Democrat Party, it's a conglomeration of their interest groups, uh, challenged to redistricting when they asked to have our. Uh, primary date and filing moved. Uh, the judges rejected that idea. We also found out this week that almost half of their arguments the judges have thrown out at face value without even arguing them. Uh, that they will not continue, including specifically dealing with uh, precincts, the division of precincts, which is what they were really basing most of their hopes on, uh, on this redistricting. Um, barring some massive explosion at this point, the 2012 elections will occur for State House, State Senate, and Congress by the maps passed by the General Assembly and approved by the Obama Justice Department. So we've got some incredible news. I also want to tell you I've been working extensively uh, in the past few weeks on the Senate side and try to reconcile on the House side. Uh, it is my commitment and becoming that of our leaderships we will cut the gas tax in the short session. No Not cap, but cut the gas tax. We'll be in charge. Uh, and I'm looking to sponsor that bill myself to move forward and make sure that's the direction we're headed. And I know that's been a contentious point. Uh, I'll also say that for the first time last week, I've been attacked on something that I never thought I was attacked on. The ACLU has sent a nice little letter to the State Attorney General complaining about our prayer and that members of the General Assembly and in the Senate, our chaplain as well, pray to open sessions. They cited a prayer that I gave when I was given the privilege of opening prayer for the session. Most specifically, they're looking at citing prayer that's in Jesus' name. Or as the prayer I gave, the only authority given us under heaven. Amen. And, you know, I went and sat down with an individual at school and from my youth group, and he was wearing a T-shirt last week, had a cross on it. And this teacher says, this T-shirt is illegal in 55 countries. I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to stand for it being illegal in our state legislature. That no one will ever tell me how I will grow. That that is between me and God. And it is an inalienable right. Not given by the government, not given by other people. So they may say I don't get the pulpit, but they won't say how I pray when I do. And they're bringing this case on the fact that in Greensboro, they have taken the city council to our district court, and the, and the district court ruled, U.S. district court, district court ruled that prayers basically have to be sectarian. That their prayers were too Christian in nature. And the Supreme Court did not take up the case. They are now claiming this is a binding ruling on this district. This will impact whether your county commissioners may open in prayer and how they do it. And if there will be someone from the ACLU there to monitor those prayers. Because that's what they've promised across the state. Fortunately, our Democrat Attorney General took the ducking way out and said that he would forward to lead, later on to legislative leaders uh, and wouldn't say anything else. But we're going to stand for this issue. And you're seeing it come up more and more. When the courts came into California today and tried to overturn their marriage amendment, saying that in very limited notions that because it was voted by the people in their constitutional amendment 
after a court ruling that it was an improper manner for the court ruling. We've got the ballot coming up in this primary. We're asking the same question in the state of North Carolina. I want to say there's a lot more at stake in this election than Republican Democrat. What values do you have? What do you stand for? And what do the people who represent you stand for? Now, there are people out there who may not like my faith or the way they pray. And that's fine. I will stand before them when I run, and they will make their decisions. But they're not going to change who I am to a cult. Whether that's some ACLU or whether that's some other group that's going to send letters and attack us in the legislature, it's just not the way we're going to handle it. But this is a shining moment in 2012. Our congressional seat looks more like an opportunity that we can retake that in western North Carolina. I'm proud to be from Mitchell County and say that I'm joining you now in the 11th District. And I can tell you we're bringing a lot of Republicans with us over here. All right. From Avery County and Burke County and Caldwell County. And we've been redistricting. Yes, they removed the only part that's different here in the mountains, the urban city areas in Charlotte and Asheville. And we took every urban area and said that it's represented by two Congress people, by two members of Congress in the state. And Asheville's no different. And we've changed the dynamics in this state. We've changed them with redistricting. They're going to bring the fight back. This court ruling is really only delayed. They're making shots and hopes that they can bring it up in the next session and force the legislature to redraw the district lines. As for the general election, and I say we are having the marriage amendment, and parties don't get involved in primaries, and I understand that, and I support that when I was primary chair, but you have an issue on the ballot that's calling for your action. And so I'm not asking you to get in with candidates or make those endorsements, choose who you want, but we have to stand as a community on issues and changes to our Constitution and see what safeguards we need in place. So... I'm heading back to Raleigh in the morning. Next week we're coming for a session. I don't know yet what the agendas are. Uh, it may be a skeletal session. We may gavel in and gavel out. Um, and that's always likely in the Senate. There are issues, potentially the Cherokee Compact, if the governor can ever get something actually worked out that meets constitutional muster, we may look at discussing it. Uh, she's not going to hand it to us the morning of and say, take this up. Uh, but the dynamics have changed. Uh, the governor's putting her whole fight into this budget on one proposal. She's going to raise your taxes. Three-quarter cent sales tax. It's the governor's new proposal for saving our state. I'm going to stand here in Western North Carolina and say it's a proposal for sending jobs and industry to Tennessee. Because that's our competitive advantage. And you've heard me say that over and over again. In this part of North Carolina... It is our competitive advantage that we have had a lower sales tax than Tennessee. Don't let the state take that away again. And we're going to stand for that. So, Thank you all again for the time. It's been an incredible year. Uh, and I look forward to asking you for your support in another year and another term. So thank you all again. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you.